What happened at the very start of the universe? I'm not talking here about the physics of the Big Bang, about the details of how forces and particles evolved in the first few seconds of time. Once the universe has got going, all the rest, although interesting, is just detail. I'm talking here about the very moment at which it all came into being. There are two possibilities. Either the universe came from nothing, absolutely nothing, no time, space, energy or matter, or it came from something. There are no other options. I've always had a problem with the idea of ex nihilo, out of nothing, in the strictest sense, because, you see, there can't be nothing. The existence of nothing is a logical contradiction. Existence is predicated upon there being something. So, if nothing can't exist, it can't have been the starting point for the universe. People sometimes wonder why there's anything at all. Well, I've just answered that. The reason there's something is that there can't be nothing. There can't be non-existence. There could be empty space, there could be chaos or something completely unimaginable to us, but non-existence, the absence of anything, can't exist. It cannot be. So you can't get existence from non-existence. There can never have been a transition from the one to the other. That means there must have been something from which the universe came. Having established that based on simple logic, we can ask the question, what was the nature of that something? And there are several possibilities. The first starts from the idea that our universe, the particular bubble of space and time and energy in which we find ourselves, isn't unique. It's just one of countless different universes that make up something that's been called the multiverse. In the multiverse concept, universes continually come into being, like bubbles in the foam on top of a choppy sea. It's a very old idea that crops up not just in science, but in philosophy and all kinds of literature throughout the ages. Some scientists aren't happy with it because it's hard to see how it could be tested. How can we ever look outside our universe to see if there really are others? But just because it isn't testable, at least for now, doesn't mean it isn't true. Of course, if our universe and countless others arose out of some pre-existing state, then we're still faced with the question of where that pre-existing state came from. But there's no reason it can't always have been there. It's only because we know our universe is expanding from some initial point about 13.8 billion years ago that we ask what came before the Big Bang. If we lived in a steady state universe, the question of a unique point of origin would never arise. But what if our universe is unique? Surely then we can ask what came before it. The first point to note is that the term before assumes that there's some neat and tidy way to figure out the order of things in time, but there isn't. There's no standard clock by which events in the universe can be put into a clear, orderly sequence. For example, to a photon, a particle of light, the universe always seems to last for an instant and be infinitely small. In a photon's frame of reference, all distances are zero and all journeys are completed the moment they begin. So we have to be careful when talking about time in a cosmic context because our everyday human understanding of the neat and orderly progression of events doesn't necessarily apply to the universe as a whole. Some people wonder why if our universe is unique that it just so happens to be precisely suited for the existence of life, considering the chaos that existed early on with particles rushing everywhere at random, it seems incredible that it could have organized itself into stars and planets and living things and ultimately intelligent beings that can ask questions about the universe. This suggests to some people that the universe is designed for life and that therefore there must be a designer. 
But in fact, there are various possible solutions to the problem of why, if the universe is unique, it seems so uniquely well suited to life. The first, but not very satisfying one, is that if it didn't happen to be such a universe, we wouldn't be here to be asking questions about it. Well, that's true, but it doesn't really explain anything, and you just feel as though it's a circular argument. Another possibility is that the universe goes through cycles, alternately expanding and collapsing, and it's only in some cycles that life actually evolves. Yet another possibility, which I expanded on in my book Equations of Eternity, written a long time ago now in 1993, is that we somehow play a part in our own creation. That we, or other intelligences out there, are inevitable consequences of cosmic evolution. In one of the strongest forms of this so-called anthropic principle, which draws upon the idea from quantum mechanics that observation collapses the wave function, we bring the universe into existence. We bring it into existence by observing it ever more closely and in detail, and in the end, selecting the one reality that must inevitably give rise to us. The universe has created us, and in turn we create the universe, in a self-sufficient and self-nurturing loop. Or maybe not. Take your pick from the many various options for how the universe came to be. What you can be absolutely sure of, though, is that you can never get something from nothing. <laughs>